Hello, everyone, and welcome to the SIG Auto Scaling Update for KubeCon Cloud NativeCon Europe 2023. Uh, so, what does SIG Auto Scaling own? Um, we now own a number of uh, different sub projects. Uh, so, the Balancer, which is new for um, the sort of past year, uh, Piotr will be giving you an update on that and the implementation of that. Um, we also own the cluster autoscaler for scaling your cluster in terms of nodes um, horizontally. Uh, and Giant will be giving you an update on one of the newer bits of functionality uh, for that to aid cluster operators in debugging what the cluster autoscaler is, is doing and why. Um, we also own horizontal and vertical pod autoscaling, horizontal pod autoscaling, which is implemented as part of the um, Kubernetes Kubernetes controller manager, um, but also vertical pod autoscaling, a newer um, standalone component. Um, and Chen and Kelly will be talking you through a demo of a proposal for a new uh, feature called the multi-dimensional pod autoscaler and how that will uh, uh, allow uh, users to potentially overcome some of the uh, current challenges with using horizontal and vertical pod auto scaling together. Um, and finally, we also own the add-on resizer. However, we won't really be covering that this time around. Um, so I've mentioned some of the in-depth demos um, and uh, sort of walkthroughs you're about to get. However, we also have a number of other um, updates that are, um, might be of interest to you as a cluster operator or a user of a Kubernetes offering. Um, so for the horizontal pod autoscaler, container resource scaling has been available in alpha um, since 1.20. Um, a member of the community has finally picked up um, the work to pr get that promoted to beta um, in time for Kubernetes 127, hopefully. Um, and that will allow uh, users uh, pro uh, potentially have managed services um, provided by cloud providers who might block off um, alpha features uh, potentially to make use of it. Um, and this, this has the potential to improve the um, your, your ability as a service owner to improve the granularity of your scaling behaviors. Um, we also, as um, owners of Cluster Autoscaler, have uh, committed to an improved release process going forward. Um, so current users may be aware that the patch release um, to this point has been a bit ad hoc. Um, we are looking to provide a, a, a far more clarity for users of the Cluster Autoscaler as to when patch releases might come out and therefore when um, cherry picks of uh, bug fixes, etc. might make it back to supported releases. Um, and finally, on the vertical pod autoscaling side, we're looking to we're beginning to gather the work to enable taking advantage of dynamic pod resizing. Uh, this has always been intended as a feature for uh, the vertical pod autoscaler. However, uh, we've been uh, dependent on uh, work from other SIGs, and that's now progressing significantly and looks like it's going to make into Kubernetes 127 release. Um, so we want to be ready to do uh, all of the work that's required um, for the VPA to take advantage of that as soon as possible. Um, if any of this interests you, um, we, we as I said, definitely need help. As mentioned, we have uh, ownership of a number of different sub-projects and we need uh your help as the community in all of these areas uh we we'd love to get your feedback where issues uh, where um some of our projects aren't working the way you think they should um or progressing up that uh, contributor ladder, ladder via issue triage P reviewing prs or even contributing features or bug fixes that you are uh in, think are important or excited about um, if any of that interests you, um, please get in touch with us as a SIG. Uh, we hang out on um, the GitHub repo that hosts most of our projects. We also have weekly SIG meetings at 1600 CAT. If this time zone doesn't work for you, please reach out and we'll try to arrange something. Um, however, we're also reachable on Slack at SIG Autoscaling. Um, and enjoy the demos. Hi, I'm going to cover Balancer a new resource in the autoscaling space. It allows to control how pods are distributed across similar deployments and autoscale them together. In a second, I will explain why it may be useful. We've introduced the balancer resource and a controller for it. 
To use it, uh, you need to install an optional component from Kubernetes slash Autoscaler. It's just been published, so it's an early alpha stage. So why would you want to distribute pods in a workload across multiple similar deployments? There are a couple of use cases. Perhaps you have a regional cluster and want to ensure that the workload is spread evenly across zones for availability reasons. You have multiple deployments, each responsible for a different zone. When pods are added or removed uh, to the workload, you expect this even distribution to be maintained. Or perhaps you want to run your workload on both standard VMs and spot or preemptible VMs, which are cheaper but less reliable. You would like to always have 25% of pods running on these less reliable VMs. Again, you expect new pods to be distributed according to the defined ratio. Or perhaps you run your workload on different machine families, or there's any other slight difference in configuration. Now that we know when the balancer feature may be useful, let's explore how to configure it. Let's say I want to balance my app between two deployments in a three to one ratio. The use case we described earlier for the 25% of pods on spot VMs. You can see the balancer YAML to the right. API version balancer.xcates.io slash v1 alpha 1 kind balancer. This balancer defines two targets, which are deployments called myapp A and myapp B. We can define min and max replicas for each target. And lastly, we define the policy. In this case, this will be a proportional policy with ratios 3 and 1. With this config, if the balancer controller detects that the number of replicas in deployments is no longer in proportions of 3 to 1, it will redistribute pods to bring back the desired ratio. Also, when scale on the balancer object changes, so pods are to be added or removed, balancer controller will add or remove them from the right deployments in order to maintain the 3 to 1 ratio. This combines well with horizontal pod autoscaling, so we can define an HPA that has the balancer object as its scale target. This HPA covers the whole workload, both deployments combined, and recommends by updating the scale on the balancer object. The balancer controller then distributes this new scale across its targets, uh, deployment A and B. Let's have a look at a different use case. I want to run my app generally in deployment A, maybe because it's a particular zone I prefer. However, if there's no space there, max replicas are reached, then overflow to deployment B, a different zone perhaps. As soon as there's space in deployment A, rebalance pods back there. You can see that now the policy part of the balancer YAML at the bottom is set to type priority, and priority order is defined as myapp A first and myapp B second. We can add a new requirement where if pods cannot start in deployment A, even if max replicas is not reached there, we will still start pods in deployment B. Perhaps there are pending pods in deployment A because there is no space in the, the node pool. We can configure this fallback behavior by adding a fallback section to the policy spec. We enable fallback and define the startup timeout, the time after which a pod is considered blocked. It will trigger starting another pod in deployment B. Once the original pods finally start, the excessive pods in deployment B are removed. In summary, the new balancer resource allows to define how pods should be distributed across similar deployments. You can additionally define horizontal pod autoscaling on the balancer object to autoscale the pods together. You can learn more at the GitHub repository page, Kubernetes slash autoscaler, and we're waiting for your feedback. Thanks. Hi, everyone. How are you doing?
Um, today, I'm going to be presenting uh, debugging Snapshotter, which is a tool that we have in Cluster and Scaler. Before we get into what the tool is, let me under, let me try to explain what are we trying to solve here. Uh, CA logs a lot of information about the decisions taken. Uh, for example, if you scale up, you scale down, you don't scale up, but we don't log what data these decisions are based on. As CA internally simulates the behavior of the entire cluster, and that's just too much to log. Uh, when something goes wrong, we usually need to understand how these decisions were taken and not just what these decisions were. Um, RCA of an issue usually takes time and the internal state of the cluster changes when we mitigate the issue, uh, thereby making it more difficult to debug the issue. Um, debugging Snapshotter is a tool to visualize the internal state of cluster autoscaler at a point in time to help debug autoscaling issues. So before you go about mitigating a cluster, maybe it would be easier if you had a snapshot of what was the state of cluster autoscaler at the time when the issue was happening. Um, so let me quickly take you through some common use cases that are available. Uh, you know, scale up and scale down not working with special focus on scale from zero nodes. Uh, maybe if you have an attached instance group, for example. Um, there's a mismatch between scheduler and cluster autoscaler decisions where cluster autoscaler decides to not scale up, but scheduler says it cannot schedule anything. Um, there's a mismatch in resource availability on a node where there might be X resource on the node, uh, but cluster autoscaler assumes there's a different resource available. Uh, so what data is being captured, you know, by the snapshotter uh, that's available for you? Um, first and foremost, the node list, uh, that's essentially all of the nodes in the cluster. Uh, secondly, any unschedulable pods that cluster autoscaler things are schedulable. Um, there's also template nodes, which are simulated nodes or uh, any attached instance group which, with no nodes on the cluster. Um, there is an error field which, which is filled in case the snapshot or fails and there's an error generating the snapshot itself. And there's a start and end timestamp. Uh, this, this could help you with if, if you decide to take multiple snapshots and also um, uh, how also because a snapshot or might sometimes take a non-trivial amount of time. Uh, so this this would encapsulate you know the complete time frame when this particular snapshot was generated. Um, how does it work? Um, it basically captures the internal fields that we talked about when we receive a request for a snapshot and returns a well-formed JSON. Um, after receiving the request in the following cluster or scalar processing loop, snapshot will snapshot the cluster state uh, and limit it to a single loop, no crossing data. So it will start to capture uh, in the following loop, at the start of the loop, and it will go through all of the steps that Cluster Autoscaler goes through and collect all of the data that um, is part of the snapshot and end when that particular process loop closes. Um, the HTTP request blocks uh, for the duration of the snapshot generation and returns a JSON as the HTTP response to the request. Uh, there's no files. You make a request, you wait for some time, and you get the response as... Uh, HTTP response. Um, how do you make this request? Uh, you SSH onto the server running the leader plus or scaler in case you're running multiple plus or scalers and you curl to this following link. Uh, it's a local port that uh, uh, that plus or scaler has a path available on. Um, let's quickly go through the demo. It's super simple. Uh, we have a plus or scaler running uh, and we have a cluster running where we have three nodes in the cluster. We have a uh, cl cl cluster auto scalar logs here, which, which has an attached instance group, uh, which is empty for now. And let's, um, let's apply a pod or a deployment with some resource requests, which cannot be accommodated on any of the existing nodes. Uh, and we should see a scale up at that point. So let me go ahead and apply uh, the deployment. Uh, we have done that. Um, if you see here, uh, let's do some space. We have a pod uh, that is unschedulable, um, and uh, we see a scale up for an instance group. Uh, this is GC specific, but this also simulates two different uh, cl cloud providers. 
Um, and as soon as we see the whole operation being done, let's go ahead and make uh, a snapshot request uh, as we see here. And if you see in the logs, we also have uh, logs around the snapshot array. So um, it's, it marks when it has received the request. Uh, let me just take you through it uh, really quickly. And it, there's a bunch of other things on you know when the data collection has started, uh, what data is already being collected, and um, you know snapshotter uh, snapshot being flushed uh, back as response. So here we have we have already a, we just made a call request when as soon as that happened. and we see now there are four nodes, but we made this before the node the new node is registered. So we should see the new pod uh, as something that can be scheduled um, uh, by and but there's no other uh, yeah. So let's go through all of the different items. Um, and we're going to use uh, a common JQ tool that's used to parse JSONs. And if you see here, uh, we, we have a bunch of items that are available that, uh, as keys. So let's go ahead and see how many uh, nodes there are. And there are four nodes. Um, we can also see template nodes. Um, here, let's go through that. And there will be one template node because we have one attached instance group which has a simulated node available. And we will also have, um, um, what do you say, unscheduled pods that can be scheduled. And this would be the node um, that is available. Uh, th this is the pod uh, that could be scheduled on the upcoming node, but isn't. So it it's it's in that, middle state and this could also represent a a bad pod uh, or unscheduled pod which uh, you might want to debug so if you see here nginx deployment one and yeah there, there is a bunch of information around it and this is how you can easily navigate your uh, json um, and yeah that, that's it so let me give you a quick rundown uh, a quick start on how you can get yourself up and running with debugging Snapshotter. You just need to enable the Snapshotter on your cluster or scale with in the manifest and by adding the following flag to the manifest. Uh, this is already available in production uh, on all cluster or scale versions 124 and above. So I, I'm hoping even for older clusters where people want more stability, this should also be uh, available for you. Um, also, there are going to be detailed instructions um, in cluster or scalar FAQs, similar to what I have gone through um, that you can refer to and you know how to operate the snapshotter. And we're looking forward to hearing back on any feedback that you have and any possible extensions to the snapshotter that you think would make everybody's life easier. Um, yeah, that's all for me. Uh, thanks, everyone. Um, and passing it on. Hello, everyone. I'm Chen Wang from IBM Research. Uh, today, my colleague Michele Orlandi and I will introduce our new enhancement proposal for Kubernetes Autoscaler, which is called Multi-Dimensional Pod Autoscaler. I'm a research staff member from IBM Research, and my daily work involves enhancement in Kubernetes, including autoscalers, schedulers, and uh, node resource plugins. I'm also actively working on cloud-native AI system platform and applying AI techniques in cloud platform management. I'm an open source advocate, a Kubernetes contributor, and a regular KubeCon speaker. So today, I will briefly introduce our motivation, why we propose multi-dimensional pod autoscaler and the uh, design of the MPA, and Later, Michele will show us a demo on how to use the MPA. So currently, there are two auto-scaling controllers available in the community, which is the horizontal pod auto-scaler and vertical pod auto-scaler. So Kubernetes horizontal pod auto-scaler, later we refer to HPA, is an auto-scaler that allows you to automatically scale the number of paths in a deployment or replica side based on either the CPU utilization metric or other custom performance metrics. So with HPA, you can ensure that your application is running at an optimal performance or at uh, optimal uh, 
CPU utilization rate, and uh, by automatically scaling out and in the number of paths based on the metric. And another controller is called Vertical Pod Auto Scaler, we later refer to VPA. So VPA automatically adjusts the resource request and limits of a container based on its actual usage, rather than the initial value set by the developer. It analyzes the his historical resource usage patterns of the pod periodically, and then recommends an appropriate resource request or limit to be set for the pod. This ensures that the pod always has the amount of resources allocated to it based on its usage and can help prevent over-provisioning of resources. So the design of VPA actually consists of three main controllers. The recommender analyzes the historical usage patterns of the pod and recommends the resource usage and limit to be set based on the histogram of the resource usage observed in a previous time uh, window. Uh, usually 15 minutes. And the update the updater is responsible for observing the difference between the recommended request and limits and the current set request and limit, and will evict the path if the gap is too big. And the admission controller is responsible for updating the path request and limit when the path uh, evicted paths are restarting uh, according to the recommended values provided by the recommender. So those three controllers work together to provide automatic vertical scaling for Kubernetes paths, allowing them to dynamically adjust their resource requests and limits based on their actual usage. So because uh, right now, HPA and VPA control the scaling actions separately as independent controllers. Um, so uh, when they are configured to optimize uh, certain targets, for example, CPU usage, they can lead to an awkward situation where uh, HPS tries to spin more pods based on the higher the threshold CPU usage, while VPA tries to squeeze the size of each pod, pod based on the uh, lower CPU usage after scaling out by the HPA. So the final outcome could be conflicting, meaning it will lead to a large number of small paths created for the workload. And none of the objectives uh, were, uh, can be guaranteed. So there's some motivations for the, um, for the combined control of both horizontal and vertical scaling, because first, uh, we, somet we sometimes want to fine tuning the timing to do the vertical and horizontal scaling and prioritize a certain dimension um, auto scalings uh, than the other. And there might be some, there might need some synchronizations between both actions. And sometimes controlling the vertical scaling based on the usage and controlling the horizontal scalings based on the performance just doesn't guarantee either performance or uh, resource efficiency. Because the usage observed is statistics from a time window and sometimes a certain margin of resource uh, over provisioning is needed to handle the fluctuation of the workload to guarantee certain performance objective. Therefore, there needs an advanced combined algorithm to find an optimal combined control of uh, Vertical and, uh, vertical and horizontal scaling actions for a certain application under a certain load. So moreover, in some cases, one objective is prioritized than the other. For example, when there is only one replica for deployment, you may only want to scale down uh, the uh, vertical scaling down the resources if the resource utilization is low. So uh, therefore, uh, here we propose a multi-dimensional pod auto-scaling framework that combines the control of vertical and horizontal scaling in a single action, but separates the actuation of actions completely from the controlling algorithm. Uh, just similarly as a design of VPA, uh, MPA consists of three controllers, a recommender, an updater, and an emission controller. And of course, we have a new API defined in the customer resources as MPA. 
and that connects all the auto scaling recommendations to its uh, actuation. So the multi-dimensional scaling algorithm is implemented in the recommender. The scaling decisions derived from the recommender are stored in the MPA object, and the updater and emission controller retrieves those decisions from the MPA object and actuate those vertical horizontal actions. So our proposed MPA can also support developers to replace the default recommender with their alternative customized recommender uh, algorithm. So developers can provide their own recommendations and their own algorithms implementing some advanced control of both actions. So in details, in MPA API, developers can specify the auto-scaling configurations include whether they only want to know the recommendations from MPA or whether they want MPA to directly actuate the auto-scaling decision. And it um, can specify certain application performance targets, such as latency or throughput, and it allows any custom metric to be used and uh, eight, um, um, so other also scaling configurations such as uh, what has been available in HPA and VPA are also available in MPA. So MPA API is also responsible for connecting the auto scaling actions uh, generated from the recommender to the automation controller and updater. And it's created based on the MPA um, uh, actually, the MPA uh, custom resources uh, provided by the upstream community. And it um, basically, it is a CR and it keeps track of uh, what's recommended um, size of pod and the number of replicas. So the rec recommender just retrieves the time indexed measurement data from the metrics API about the usage and uh, it generates the vertical and horizontal scaling actions. And the actions from the recommender are then updated in the object, and the, the auto-scaling behavior is based on the user-defined configuration as well. And the updater will update the number of replicas of the deployment and evict eligible pods for vertical scaling. And the admission controller, just similar as the VP admission controller, uh, will just update the pod request limit for those evicted pods when they are starting. So here is an example YAML defined an MPA object. So it includes configurations such as update policy, uh, namely, whether you want to do recommendation only or you want to actually actuate those auto scaling actions. And then uh, the recommender, it de defines, you can define the default recommender or any customized alternative recommender with the name you provided. And there are also vertical scaling related configurations, such as the minimum, maximum allowed resources, the type of resources you want to control, and what containers to resize. The horizontal scaling related configurations include the minimum maximum number of replicas and the type of metric um, uh, each horizontal auto scaling is operating on. So uh, that's all of my introduction of MPA framework. And next I will hand it to um, Michele to show a simple demo on how to use it. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Michele. Uh, I'm from Italy. Uh, today, I'm going to show you uh, the multi-dimensional pod autoscaler. We can see this as a, a mixture between a vertical and horizontal autoscaler. Uh, I'm running on uh, IBM Cloud IKS Kubernetes uh, uh, cluster. So. Uh, let me deploy the objects, uh, the YAMLs that are, are going to uh, make up my um, autoscaler. So as you can see, it's creating uh, uh, some customer resource definitions, cluster role bindings, services. I'm going to mainly uh, look at this particular um, deployment which is the uh, the actual recommender 
So let me just get the actual name of the pod for this one. So that's the one. Okay. Sorry. Okay. So it, it has no actual MPA object to observe. So I'm going to create one right now. This object is just a, a deployment, uh, uh, is, is, is the actual autoscaler. And as a target, it has this deployment here, which I'm going to actually apply here. So as you can see, uh, I've created my Apache uh, uh, application. Next, we're going to wait until the actual the recommender actually detects the metrics from the application. At the moment, no metrics are available yet. Still not getting the metrics here. As you can see, the recommended CPU is 100 millicores. Oh, there, there we go. Metrics have arrived, so we should get the recommender to detect them. Over here, we have a li limit and requested uh, CPU for the uh, the only pod running. Okay, so here we have the uh, the vertical scaling. It has updated the CPU recommendation, but it has decided not to scale the number of, uh, horizontally scale the number of uh, uh, pods, because as you can see, the pod is basically just sitting there. So I'm just gonna load, add a load to this, uh, to this pod. I'm going to load it with the uh, request and let's see what the recommender says. When does the recommender detect the load. As you can see, the metrics are still not being updated, even though the pod is, is fulfilling all these requests and the replicas have not been updated either. Now the metrics have, have, have gone up. We have uh, 157 millicores, so the recommender should realize this on the next uh, uh, run and should scale up both horizontally and uh, uh, vertically. Let's see what happens. Okay, there you go. So this is the new horizontal scaling, uh, sorry, vertical. And uh, and this is the actual horizontal one because we now we have four replicas, four desired replicas. And in fact, we already, they have already been uh, updated here. You can see also the, the replica set and then deployment has been modified and you can see also the limits and the requests have been modified this is the recommended uh millicore value for the cpu so we have 182 as the recommended value now let's see what happens on the next run okay 163 it's changed the value slightly but the replicas have now gone up to six, which is the actual maximum value that we can have, as you can see. So now let's see uh, if it scales down. We're going to stop the loading. We're going to interrupt it. Okay. Control C. There you go. So now the load pod is, has disappeared. We're going to wait until the uh, the MPA realizes it detects a lower load here coming from the metrics and we expect to have an update on the vertical and on the horizontal side so let's wait for for the recommender to detect this change okay what do we have here uh, vertical 126 yeah it's definitely going down before i think it was 182 but the actual, the horizontal scaling is, it has still not gone down. <coughs> As you can see, average utilization is basically zero. Still not scaling. Vertical recommendation is not changing either, even though metrics are all below target. So it's actually uh, watching metrics from all pods. Okay, vertical recommendation has gone down, but horizontal is still at six. Okay, I think we have something there. Okay, this is the new desired replicas. Okay, it is already scaled down and we're basically back to the initial situation. Yes, it took a couple of minutes to 
to actually scale down, but uh, in the end, we did it. Okay, uh, I think that's it for now. Uh, thank you for watching this video and uh, hope to see you soon. Bye.